Welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. This is the officially the third episode, right? Yes, sir. That's three. Three in a row. Three weeks in a row. Uh, well, we, we're we'll trying to get Kobe numbers, so we got to get like higher than that, right? I'm trying to get LeBron's point one, numbers. One over, one, uh, one over Jordan. Like, I'm uh, down. Jordan's ten episodes. Already. That's the goal right now. So we're gonna put out ten episodes. That might be the first season. Uh, we may make it longer. Not sure. Trying to figure out how we're gonna do this. It's up to y'all. Yeah, it's really up to y'all. If you guys like the content, you guys want us to do more, let us know. Um, Actually, that's a great uh, segue into our update. Big news. Um, I, I think there's an actual. Hold on, let's figure out. Okay, there's that. No, 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 that's lame. That's lame. Let's let's let's. <laughs> no. Okay, okay, we'll do this one. All right. So actually, uh, we will drum roll. Uh, nah, 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 nah. That's that's not like funky right there. I like that. For one. good news. All right, good news. Anytime we have yeah. good news, we're gonna push this. All right, good news is we are now on every platform, um, except Google Podcasts, because I got to figure that out still. So uh, Spotify, YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, we're on them all. So hopefully uh, my jujitsu uh, my jujitsu academia will be getting out there and you guys will get some more of this content. Um, we have a new set this week. Uh, what? No, nah, just the way you say get some more of this content was kind of funny. To me. <laughs> <laughs> Come get some of this content. You know? Content. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. You know, y'all know what's up. Mm -hmm. Um uh yeah, so we got a new set this week, and our sets will probably change. Uh my life is all over the place and I move a lot. So uh, you know, kind of just do this Airbnb thing, take contracts. It's a fun life. Um Traveling the world, doing random things. I feel you. This one's nice too. Oh uh, yeah, this this spot is nice. So uh, it's really nice because it has like, this floor space, and then I can move these out, and then you, you see the mats over there. Yeah, I seen that whenever you came in. Yeah. I was like, you got the jump on me. I didn't even train it in. Yeah. <laughs> got the yeah, mats man. out. You know, I can't live in a place without uh, mats. It's kind of my life thing. Oh, bro, if I get mats, my dog's all over it, so it's done. Oh, it's no, my dog, it. she knows. No, she knows. That is the rule. She, oops. Uh, she does not get on my mats ever. I'm like, no. She tries. She does. She does. She tries so hard. She'll scoot up and she'll like, like, it's comfortable. <laughs> and like, she'll no, right up on the edge, like right up on the edge, her back. I'm like, off. And she's like, Hey, uh, she was gonna, like off, so I, I make sure she has like this much space, like an inch or two of space between the mat. The, but I, I'll go on a pet her, like, but like she, yeah, she pushes yeah, the limits. No, nah, my uh, my dog is hard headed, bro, and like I know for a fact it would be like a, it would be an issue. And you uh, have you ever you know Rottweilers? They're like super verbal. I was just about to ask you what kind of dog you have. Yeah, so like yeah, she would she growl and like or like for not like and like uh, like pout and like pound the floor. Oh, or the like the Roddy Rumble. Mm hmm. Mm. That's exactly what okay. I'll deal with. <laughs> She's I, I, that was horrible. <laughs> that <again>. Dmx. <laughs> man, he was uh, he was man. R.I.P. Man, he was. All right, we're rambling right now. So let's let's get back on focus. Yes, um, sir. Uh, our sets will be changing um, from now until the end of time, uh, until I get some more stable. Uh, we might do this virtually. We might do this uh, via, you know, uh, Skype chat or some shit like that. But yeah. Sets are tentative. Sets are tentative. Um, guest all over the place. But uh, right now, actually, I'm, I'm booking, uh, hopefully, uh, my black belt professor, Albert, soon. Uh, shout out to him. He Sheesh. said he's going to come on, so he'll probably be our next guest uh in like a couple of weeks and he he doesn't look like he could destroy you but he can man he's the he nicest is guy. he is beautifully he's a beautiful savage oh, bro. He, silent he almost put me to sleep i think my <laughs> third class like he got me in this choke and i was like i'm good and then the next thing i know my lips were numb what kind of choke was it Bro, it, I think it was a cross. It was like a cross collar variant, but okay. the way he got it was just kind of smooth. I didn't like really respect the grip yeah. until I had to respect the grip. He's you know? very like he's one of those like you have to. There's some black belts like you like you don't really have to necessarily. I, I don't know if they're turning it up or not. So let me not act like I know how black belts move. But when I roll with some black belts, 
There are some I feel like I don't necessarily have to respect the grip, and it's probably because they're giving me a chance to move. But there are some like if you don't pay attention to oh, grip, it doesn't matter. Yeah. They're like it's the most sneakiest grip ever, and he, it's gonna do something amazing. He does this thing where he gets his grip, and you don't notice it, but you're tightening it yourself. Like I think he grabs like mm. deeper than he should, and as you move and like shift, you're like feeding it to where it needs to be for him, and he okay. just catches it at that right time. But he's so fucking good at it. Ah, <laughs> oh, it's annoying. Um, shout out Albert though. Shout out Albert. That's shout what's up. Um, you know, he's actually what I really like about him, and this is um is that like I feel like his philosophy is very um he wants to help everyone. I don't know yeah. if the, I don't want to say if that's his philosophy, but like he wants to it feels like he genuinely wants to help and he wants to give you all the details to make you as successful as possible. And I love that about him. So like the the crazy thing about martial arts that's so looked over is that people forget that like the the approachability factor is so important. Mm -hmm. And like when you walk into the gym and the first face you see is Albert's, it's very like calming and reassuring just because he like as soon as you see you, it doesn't matter if he's seen you for the first time or the thousandth time, you feel like you've known him your whole life. Mm -hmm. Big smile, great energy, get you ready to go great great professor great professor yeah he's pretty dope um and i like how he um i like how he teaches i have a question for you and this is um i wanted to know what your philosophy on jiu-jitsu is like you're a purple belt you've been doing this a little bit a while like do you are you starting to figure out who you are and figure out what your jujitsu is supposed to mean? Or are you just kind of like, whatever, I'm figuring it out, whatever. So with me, it's like, it emulates life because every day is not going to be perfect. You're going to have some days where you're going to go in there and you're going to dominate and you're going to have like, it's going to feel like you can't be stopped. Those are those high points in life when you get a raise, when okay. you get a new job, when good things are happening. But there's also those stretches of weeks, months where you can't hit a sub. You mm -hmm. can't figure out the like what's going on in class. You can't like it's just not fitting. Like it's yeah. like a puzzle piece that you feel supposed to fit and it doesn't fit. Those are those low points in life. You have to learn how to fight through it somewhere, whether it's mm -hmm. on the mats or through life lessons. And personally, I'd rather learn it on the mats than life lessons, because whenever you build a habit, to fight back when you're down, it's going to spread. It's going to spread to you standing up for yourself. It's going to spread to you going for the things you believe in, for what you want. So ever since I got into jujitsu, mm -hmm. I started noticing those little things changing. Okay. So that's that's my philosophy is that it's teaching me how to be a fighter in life. Okay. In so your philosophy is pretty much to take your lessons on the mat as a fighter and do that in life. Yeah, like kind of like in a way, look for the deeper meaning of what what's going on because okay. your struggle can be. And then after you get your frustrations out on the mat, it's so easy to think of a plan. Yeah. It's all good. Um, I know. Uh, I know. We've talked about this. Uh, you're into anime Big and Naruto is your vibe are you into like the martial arts uh you know last airbender had a lot of martial arts influence into it too yeah are you into the the deeper like uh mindset discipline uh, ma ma man martial arts aspect of it so I in a way I am I I love anime for just it motivates me like there's so many characters that have speeches that you can put oh like put like background music too, mm -hmm. and it'll get you ready to run through a wall. Like uh, the dude from Attack on Titan, uh, Irwin, oh, Irwin's speech. Attack on Titan kind of creeps me out a little bit. I don't watch it. Uh, okay, well there, there's this speech where he's pretty much giving like a wartime speech. Okay. And he's like pretty much like letting them know like this may be our final stand, oh. but it's not the end of us. We're okay. gonna we're gonna be spoken about for the people that we're allowing to move forward in life because they're moving forward because of us. Damn, okay. And just the speech is crazy. Um, and then like the symbol the symbolism of like Naruto, like all these characters start off and Deku especially they start off really low. Yeah. in the in the power scale in the grand scheme of things and through just adversity wanting to wanting to be better wanting to get to the top and wanting to protect their family their friends their people they rise to this level of being 
unbeaten from a level of having no talent. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Nah, and that's actually, you know, I want to do another episode. Maybe uh, the next episode we'll talk about this a little bit more. Um, and we might, we'll get into this a little bit um, today. Uh, but my my jujitsu academia was named because of my hero academia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I feel like the lessons that Deku taught us um, or teaches uh, and just the idea of class 1A in general, like the story, you know, it starts off very much like, oh, it seems like it's going to be only about Deku. And then as it progresses, it's not just about Deku. It's about the villains. It's about uh, his his class, class 1A, and just yeah. like the struggles that they have as just trying to achieve their goals and what their goals are in life. And I feel like that mirrors 100 percent jujitsu. It mirrors 100 percent life. And there's a lot of lessons that you can take from that. And just if you can grasp the concept of you don't have to have everything to start doing what you want to do. You just have to start. Exactly. Because at the beginning, wasn't Deku only able to use up to like 6% or something? Man, like Deku that? had no powers at the beginning. Well, yeah, yeah. Like after he got the powers, though, it, like at first he was like, you have my powers, but you can only power it up to like yeah, 6%. Yeah, he was rocking 5% for yeah. a while. And then and he was like, breaking his legs and shit. Yeah. yeah. yeah if you guys haven't watched, you got to watch my hero. I'm telling you, like... um as as anyone who's training jujitsu, you should definitely watch it and try to take the lessons um, that they um, put in there with, uh, as far as competition and as far as pushing yourself uh, to be your best version of yourself to go plus ultra, as they say. So yeah, yeah, yeah. highly recommend it. Yeah. And you know, it's funny, like a little funny, like mm -hmm. add on to it. Deku's always hurt. And that always. is definitely jujitsu. Everybody in there is always hurting, aches, pains. Yeah, yeah. man. Yeah, bro. Um, how do you, uh, let me, uh, how do you handle your safety in jujitsu? For me, I, everyone has their own situation. I got to work tomorrow. Um, yeah. Mo a lot of people got to work tomorrow. I'm not trying to hurt you. I'm not trying to have you hurt me. So when it comes to safety, I feel like it's up to you as a training partner to be fully aware of what's going on, yes. paying attention to your partner's breathing patterns, paying attention. It's not just going in there to like beat someone up, like you're helping your partner progress. So you need to pay attention to all of these. If you feel your partner's like bones move weird or anything like that, you should probably ask them, check, are you okay? If they say yes too quickly, ask them a second time because usually the first one's ego. Like, are you sure? Yeah. And then move on. Um, also prioritize, like you're you're super good about it. You have like stretching. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. I stretch all the time. Yeah, like like you, you should definitely like give out some like stretching tips because I had to go <laughs> to you a couple months ago. I couldn't even bend my knee. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. I started doing those stretches and those like uh, those, uh, the, the, they're like, pistol squats kind of oh they're yeah like the little step downs the the pack wind steps or the yeah. patrick steps or whatever they're called as soon as i started that that's when my knee started Sorry. so like it's but yeah overall safety needs to be paid attention at every aspect from your recovery to mm -hmm. your stretching pre to during the role paying attention to your partner and your fucking surroundings bro yes yes like not getting lost in the role like you're so caught up in wanting to win or getting out of position that you don't know where you're at yeah and uh and honestly i don't i, I need i need to know because I, I let you know um let, let's take a step back what's your philosophy uh honestly uh my philosophy actually kind of goes into safety a little bit is like i always it's so funny uh especially with like white belts who are like conscious or, or trying to be conscious like oh, oh did i hurt you oh i'm like good i'm like i'm good i'm good my safety is my responsibility that's kind of one of my okay. biggest i don't know how to say like i i, I guess I, I can say my philosophy is like a rule book that i have so to say and that's kind of how i guide my jujitsu so i guess like one of my rules within my philosophy is uh, uh my safety is my responsibility so it's my responsibility to make sure that I'm safe. It's my responsibility to know if my arm is in danger and I don't tap, that's on me. Like it doesn't matter, right? And I've, I've, 
I've been lucky and my injuries in jujitsu have been 100% because of my previous injuries or I would say self-inflicted. <laughs> it's all good. My it's bad, all my good. Bad. That was weird. Hey, no, it's all good. I'm like, I'm about to burp in a second. I'm <laughs> trying to hold it right now. I've been trying to hold it. Uh, oh, wait, I can always just turn down my mic. Oh, your mic or something. I don't know how to do it. You know, oh, wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Can you hear? Uh, maybe I'll do that. Yeah. Let me know. Just be like, just be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they going to know if they see them, but whatever. We just, I'll just be like, got you. Cool. Yeah. Uh, no, but my philosophy, uh, safety, and just knowing uh, my safety zones, uh, knowing when I'm caught, knowing, pushing myself enough in training so I know when that tunnel, when that tunnel is closing, when to tap and yeah. not go out. Like, yeah. cause I mean, I, I, I've never actually been out. And I think like one day I may let myself do it just because I want to know what it feels like, but I tap, I go, tap. I go to the bathroom first. What do you mean? Oh, <laughs> so, hey, you can't always control your bowels when you go out. What? Yeah. Have I've you seen, seen that before? Uh, so I've heard about it more okay. than I've seen it. Um, I have seen someone piss themselves though. Someone? I have seen like when okay, they went to sleep. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Paul, you gotta tell me the story. You gotta tell me the story. Someone pissed themselves on the mat. Yeah, bro. So basically, what it was doing is um, we we're doing like like uh, instruction. Okay. Everyone's gathered around. Okay. And the same dude who's always a professor's like 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 training dummy. Mm -hmm. He gets up there. They're doing a rear naked choke from the back. It's a beginner's class. And okay. he's, he thinks he's fine. Um, and then out of nowhere, we just kind of like see his like, his arms go from here oh. and he's like here. And then like they go to like wake him up. And as soon as they lift his legs, you just see his gi just start getting dark. But it's like, it's not his fault. No, 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 it's not his fault. No, no, no. Like, hey. <laughs> that's why I'm like, oh, like my, my face right now is like, oh, shit, that's funny. I should be laughing because that's sad as fuck at the same time. <laughs> yeah, like everyone, everyone was cool. Everyone was cool. No one yeah, made jokes course. about it until he did. When he made the joke about it, we definitely started calling him pissy gee, pissy I mean, pants. I mean, shout out to him for like owning it though, right? Like I, I, I think I believe in owning, owning yeah. something like that. Yeah, it, it's part, it's part of the sport. And like, he didn't expect to go out and you yeah. know how blood like blood chokes are like if they're done good enough and like right sometimes they're immediate it's a wrap yeah yeah so, not big facts um yeah i had a family member uh who uh you know used the bathroom on themselves uh when we were like on, on a family trip and it was it was it, watching them go through that embarrassment was like man i never want to go through that but also you know i i made sure this person i was like hey look it's Cool. What can I do for you? Yeah. Uh, you need me to run back to the hotel room, get you clothes. Well, how can I? I know you feel some sort of way. Do you need me to get some soap, some wet wipes? Like stop on CVS, whatever the case. Like, oh, let me. Man. Yeah. So I'm not. I'm not gonna lie. It depends on the person. If it's mm -hmm. it's depending on the person in the situation. Okay. Like if someone's like out here drunk and I don't and mm. like I'm gonna be like brother we got to figure you, you out. Made your bed now laying it. Yeah, Big I'm facts. like don't touch me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, my philosophy. I'm gonna get us back on course now. That was I had to hear that. I'm sorry, I had to hear the story. But uh, my safety. I'm gonna repeat this one more time. My safety is my responsibility, and I think um, just kind of just. Do the best you can with what you have yeah. and work on your weaknesses, no matter what they are, even if it scares you, even if it's hard, even if it's difficult, find a way to work on your weaknesses. And I say that as someone who has a lot of weaknesses because of my body, you know, um, luckily, uh, like I said, I've only had uh, one injury, two injuries uh, from jujitsu. The first one was, I feel like it was a dick ass move I was rolling with uh, I don't know if he was a blue belt or white belt at the time I think he was a blue belt um, but now I understand more now I understand that he was still afraid of me even though I was a white belt like understanding the energy of jujitsu now just understand like they're more like we were talking about last time they're more afraid of you than you are of them you yeah. just don't realize it yet Bro, I don't yeah. know if we're doing this on. If we are, I don't know if you're doing this on purpose, but every week it leads into the next week checks out. So first week was <laughs> ego, right? Yeah. You get your ego because of fear. Okay. Right. And now, if you don't let go of your ego and your fear, you're compromising safety. Oh, I am not doing this. This is totally yeah, organic yeah, at the moment. <laughs> right. That's how you know it's worth your time. Jujitsu, uh, jujitsu is that shit. Yes. Yes. 
one hundred percent. And then that that trans man, I keep hitting stuff. That translates off the mat when you think about these situations, like in business, or you know, you're in an interaction with your boss, and uh, you know you have the right way of doing something, but yep. your boss wants to do it this other way because your boss has a big ego, and you don't. Like I said, they ha- they have an ego. You got to temper that ego. You got to let that go, and yep. do it their way if you want to be successful at the job. What do you want? What's more important, being successful at your job? being successful at jujitsu or being right. I think it, I think it's being successful nine times out of 10. You yeah. being right is not the most important thing. Yeah. A hundred percent. Like at the end of the day, you can't control everybody. And that's another thing. Like that's another great thing about jujitsu is cause you realize when you realize you can't control what this person's going to do and you just need to learn how to react and flow yeah. with what they have going on. And you adapt that to life, everything's gonna kind of, kind of close together. At least it did for me, because yeah. I had a I had a big problem of always, like you said, I always had to be right. Um, if I knew that, like, if I knew I was doing something right or at work, and the new boss told me something, yeah. I was like, no, I have to prove to him that I'm right. But all I did was make myself a, uh, like a like a uh, like a target. A, yeah. Like make myself like as soon as he was like, it's time to get rid of someone. He's like, I know exactly what's gonna be. Man, that's been like the story of my life, you know, and, you know, that was the story of actually my pop's life, too. Um, I think there are some people who are too smart for their own good. And I, <laughs> I believe, unfortunately, I might be blessed with that curse in some ways. <laughs> not saying I'm super smart or anything like that, but like, I think my deductive reasoning is probably better than average, so to say. And that, you know... I think people could like, I think that I keep, I keep going back to this energy is real. Oh yeah. Whether you can read it or not, whether you realize it or not, energy is real. And subconsciously your subconscious picks up on that energy and subconsciously you operate a certain way based upon the energy you feel from someone. Yeah. Good, bad, ugly, indifferent, whatever the case is. So. Yeah. 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 I feel that. No. So like, Whenever you like, so whenever you, you went, like, so you said you can feel people's energies and then like you, you use it to operate how you go off of. Do you feel that that like translates into how you roll? Uh, yeah, 100 um, percent, especially when we take into factor people with like really big egos. Yeah, like yeah, there's yeah. certain people, um, even black belts and higher ranks that I know 100 percent, 100 percent. If I submit them right after it's gonna be a war if i push right after the reset it's gonna be a war it's a competition war no matter what so me i'm like cool uh if i if i find a moment of weakness and i get you and i decide i I decide in that moment i'm like do i want to do this okay i'm gonna do it but right after check your fucking ego check it right there don't play this game because going back into safety, my safety is my responsibility. If I play into that game, my safety is at stake. Yeah. And I, I like how you say that, like, because I, I do look out for people's safety, mm-hmm. but it is it is at the end of the day, your responsibility. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I can do I, I can only do what I can do to make sure that I'm not going out of my way to make it worse. But no matter who you're rolling with. You could slip. It could be. It could be any. It could be anything that can cause an injury. Yeah. So it's so important for you guys, for like anyone, just to take safety seriously. Yes, one hundred percent. I think like going off on safety. When I first started, did I ever tell you? So I like fractured my orbital like right here and broke my nose. Oh wow! No, no, and, no you didn't tell me that. So yeah, that's why at the beginning when I was like, watch your surroundings, mm. is because so. It was just like crazy timing. I'm rolling with uh, one of my favorite partners at the time. We roll over. I start coming up to like neon belly. I'm like a early blue belt. And right whenever I come up to neon belly, the group right next to us, the guy is going for a step over. So oh. I come up and his foot comes around and hits me dead in the just, like, yeah, destroyed my face. Okay. And like, I don't know if you've ever seen me roll, but I'm like hyper aware. Like as soon as I like someone's group starts, like I'm mm-hmm. always like, hey, let's shift. Or, like, <laughs> yeah, I'll yeah. stop them. So yeah, it's like, it's out of fear. 
Okay. It's out of, it's no, out of fear yeah. for sure. No, I try to stay very aware of my surroundings at all times, especially when you think from at the end of the day, I 100% believe this, that jujitsu should be about self-defense. Oh yeah. And if you're not aware of your surroundings when doing self-defense, you're going to have a fucking problem. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. For, mul for multiple reasons that we can get into later, you know, yeah. but that isn't just like safety for knowing your surroundings. Yes. But. I tell you one time it was funny, uh, knowing my surroundings, uh, this is this may sound like a brag. It's not a it's not a brag. I'll be honest with you. At the end of the day, I think everyone was drunk in this scenario. I was leaving a party. I was at IU Bloomington. I was leaving a party, and there was like this kind of this. Oops, uh, there was kind of like this girl fight happening off to the right as we were leaving, and I was like, you know, I don't want none of that. I'm just going off to the left. I'm just going going to the car. My boys with me. Well, uh, we're at the car. Now, mind you, I I'm making sure this chaos, nothing's happening over to the, the coming from that direction. So I look over there. As I look back, I see someone coming around the car and he drops my boy like just one hit. And I'm like, oh, shit, I got to fight this dude. So it ended up a situation where he pulls it. Uh, he ends up, you know, hockey move, pulls, pulls his shirt. And so I was like, you know what? I'm going for your body. So I just gave him body shots, body shots. Oh, he lets shit. go. By this time, one of his other boys was coming around here. But I would have, my point, I don't want to tell the story to fight. My point of saying this is like the fact that I was being aware that something was going on. And then I knew there was a possibility of something going on. I turned and I and like I see him coming around. I was trying to get my boys. I was like, hey, <laughs> he just hits him. And my boy turns and gets hit and dropped. Like just being aware of my surroundings. That, and now we're right by a car. I know we're like in that whole scenario. I knew that I was in between two cars, that there was a parking lot. I knew all of that. And I knew when he pulled my shirt over my head that, OK, the only thing that's viable right now is to get him against his car and give him body shots. So just the way my mind works, I've never in my life just been chilling and then to see my <laughs> homie get knocked out. So that would be the most like, I don't know. Like, I know eventually I'd beat that dude up. But knowing my sense of humor, I'd look at my homie immediately be like, Dang, <laughs> Bro, it would be so hard. You know, but that's not me. Like, I, I embody oh. the spirit of. I guess Goku or Deku, right? Yeah, yeah, like yeah. your tragedy is not my comedy. That's that. And don't get me wrong, I did laugh at dude pissing his pants. That's tragedy, right? Like, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but I just like when it comes to like more physical harm or things like that or like really bad like trauma trauma emotional harm. Like if your two parents were killed, like I'm oh, that's no, not no, that's no, not funny. That's, to too, me. that's, that's not funny. Far. It's dark. You know what I mean? So, but so I'm just like. I've been referred to as a teddy bear my whole life. Yeah. Like, you're just a big teddy bear. Uh -huh. I'm a pacifist. I don't want to fight. The only reason why I do this shit is because I know there are motherfuckers out there who are evil as shit. And if I don't know how to protect myself, they don't give a fuck. Yeah. And the, cra and the crazy thing is, is like, for a long time, I got away with like just being big and like, I'm not, I'm not evil. And I definitely would have stood up for my friend, but just the thought in my head, like maybe not in the moment, but when I thought about that shit a week later, mm -hmm. I was like, damn, that shit was random. That was a random as shit. Um, but it's crazy though. Cause for it, I like, I didn't get into a fight, like a, like a street fight or anything mm -hmm. like that. Um, I was telling you about my friends my friend's uncle, the one who did the ultimate fighter for- Oh, him. yeah, 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 Early, earlier um, when we were playing uh, UFC 5. Yo, he, <laughs> if y'all play, send me your gamer tags. Let's play. I don't What's want up? to smoke, bro. I got, I got destroyed by the computer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get him to get it. We're gonna stream it or some shit. We gonna, we gonna pop off. We gonna, yeah, we'll figure something out, but <laughs> it might not be UFC 5. No commitments from me. But I, uh, Go ahead, go ahead, but, but yeah, he just kind of opened my eyes to let me know. He's like, you don't know how to fight, bro. You know, mm -hmm. and he was kind of like, he was smaller than me, and that's whenever I was like, yeah, I need to figure some shit out, bro, yeah. because that one that one kick to my side was enough. I was man. like, oh no, nah. leg kicks are man. I thought I got shot. Man, any dude <laughs> out there who's like, I see red and has never taken a leg kick, 
Yeah. You go ahead. See red, brother. Uh, you go ahead and see red, brother. see red as you're bleeding on the freaking concrete. Yes. I've never felt a head kick and I don't want to. No. The, 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 no. The, mm. no. 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 Uh, I said I don't want to. <laughs> it just looks bad. Honestly, that's why. Um, honestly, it's honestly why I do primarily more jujitsu based training. Um, I love martial arts. This this whole thing, my jujitsu, my my jujitsu academia will include striking. And I feel like if you're not if you don't understand at least the basics of boxing, how to throw a one-two, how to slip, how to roll, how to throw a hook, like understanding a little bit of your footwork. You're in trouble. You're in trouble in any scenario and you're not gonna have the coordination to have the right balance in the you know in those in those situations and i feel you'll be okay if you if you're a wrestler you'll be fine like if you have that wrestling base but i feel like jujitsu practitioners in general don't understand the footwork of standing so that that's why this that that whole joke of like just get them to the ground and uh, you know they pull guard so you want to so you know how i've traveled a lot bro yeah. you want to know why i've traveled like from school to school so much why one of my so not my my home gym in my hometown, the Benitez Family Gym. That's my home gym Shout right out there. Benitez Family Gym. Uh, I'm a three crosses jujitsu. Three crosses jujitsu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Three, uno, dos, tres. Crosses, yeah. Crosses. Las Cruces. Las Cruces. Yeah, but uh, they train everything. They okay. train stand up. They train like they train everything there. Okay. Um, I moved here, and then I seen a lot of like high level belts with no like take they didn't know any takedowns and they didn't yeah. do any trade takedowns and that shit bothers me that shit bothers me at least know how to do a double leg so whenever i go to gyms if i like if i'm there like two three days and i don't see any takedowns or mm -hmm. anyone attempt to take down i'm leaving <laughs> i'm leaving yeah yeah but yeah that, that that's like a that's like a lost and forgotten art and that's another thing in safety <laughs> you yes. need to learn how to defend a takedown as well as take someone down because you never know when you're going to have to. And take someone down without doing a single leg or double leg on the freaking concrete. You're going to bust your knees up. You're going to, yeah, it's oh, it's going to be bad. Uh, so what's your, what's your favorite takedown? Uchimata. Uchimata. Mm -hmm. Okay. You can do it in the gi. You can do it without the gi. Okay. You can do it with an underhook. You can do it with an overhook. Okay. Does you can do it between the legs. You can do it all the way through the legs, and it's devastating when hit right. Got and it. then if you're shorter, it works. It works all the same because you just got to cut off that front, the both front kneecaps. But as soon as you get that momentum up and over, done deal. So right. Done deal. I need to learn that one. I don't know it that well. Um. My favorite, uh, I guess you call it rear body lock. Uh, it's just an ar arm drag to the rear body lock takedown. Because I feel like it's 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 low it's low cost, especially in the self defense aspect. Like most people aren't going to know what an arm drag is. Most people are going to try to re drag you, and that's fine. You're just going to shift your body weight, drop to the ground. You're in half guard to come up mm -hmm. knee on belly, and it's, it's done. Deal. Like you done get deal. away. It's 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 a simple process. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> no, I just uh, I just like. If I was on the street and I seen someone hit that technical show, I'd be like, damn. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what belt are you? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so I'm a, like I said, I'm a pacifist. So like any altercation I would get in, I'm I'm looking to de-escalate. I'm not looking to fight. Yeah. I'm I don't need any lawsuits. I ain't trying to catch a case. I ain't trying to go to jail. I'm I got it, kids to feed. <laughs> I don't. I was about to say I ain't seen none of them. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a good excuse. Uh, yeah, yeah, I got you. I got you're you. You're not supposed to. Most people don't challenge. You say you got kids to feed. Most people don't challenge. You're not supposed well, to challenge me on it. Well, bro, I've, I've, we've been kicking it for a while you're now. Right, you've right. never been a kid. That's when I was <laughs> like, right. hey, yo, what? <laughs> you're right. You're right. Uh, but yeah, like I, I, I don't know. Like I, I look at the duality of things and like safety in jujitsu and safety in your life and using it as a self defense. Mm -hmm. You have to know how to do something to know and like. Sometimes you have to take some shit apart to know how it works. Yeah. And that's what jujitsu allows you to do. Okay. And if you know how to take someone down, you know how to defend the takedown. If you know how to defend the takedown, you know how to break the takedown, and you know how to get away. Mm -hmm. And like the escalating, like you said, is always going to be the number one option. Um, I try and be a pacifist. It's something I've adopted like 
more recently. Yeah. But I'll be failing sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard, man. It's hard. I get it. I get it. I'm right there with you. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's that growing and learning, like learning and growing and changing as you get older. Yeah. And like for me, it's my temperament that's been like the hardest thing to quell. Um, do you do you have to be in control all the time? Do you have to be right? For me, that's what it is. <sighs> More than I think. I don't think I have to be right. I have to feel heard. I feel that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like if I feel if I if I don't feel heard, like then then I start being angry. You know what? Now that you say that, I think that's a lot of I think that's a lot of what it is, is like when I think of saying altercations I have within my close relationships, it's really because I feel like I've explained every which way. And it's like I'm not heard. And I just want to be heard. And I feel like as men that's probably the biggest thing that's going on in society is that we don't feel heard. Oh, bro. I have this conversation so many times <laughs> and it's like, it's like you're proving the point right now. Like we've had this conversation and you keep bringing it back to something that no, we're not even talking about over here. Yeah. Uh, so it's not, not, not to get too deep into it. No, but look, look, this show, we can get deep on the show. Honestly, the deeper we go, the better for me. Um, cause I feel, uh, what is that song? You listen to Childish Gambino? Yeah. I think it's camp. I, I don't know what the song's called camp, but it's a song where, uh, like he liked this girl and they were on the bus. Oh, she did him dirty and on she the did bus. Him dirty yeah. on the bus. And he was like, yo, I just learned to just tell everybody everything so they can't hold nothing against me or something like that, right? Yeah. Oh, bro. I remember the first time I heard that. I, I was like, at the end of the song, I was like, mouth open. I was like, what the? F yeah. But, you know, yeah. being a child that moved around a lot, I kind of embody that. Like, my, my truth is my armor. It's like, you. You can take whatever narrative you want, you know, call me all what sort of names. It doesn't matter. My truth cannot be shaken. And yeah. my truth, I wear it on my shoulders. So can't you can't use nothing against me. That, so I, I, that, that's something I struggle with, too, personally, because I come from like a smaller town. Like mm -hmm. everyone in my hometown, like growing up, they're like, oh, like I'd meet someone. They talk to me for a bit. And they're like, oh, you're so and so's grandma. I mean, mm -hmm. you're so and so's grandson. Yeah. Or so and so your grandma or your mom is like, you know what I mean? But yeah, like it made me kind of like want to hide things like or like keep things down just because like it was weird having everyone know your business. Yeah. Like when I'm in trouble, everyone knows I'm in trouble. Yeah. Because like it's a small community, so everybody talks. Uh, so it eventually led to me not like really wearing like who I am on like on my sleeve. Like, yeah. like I didn't really talk about my interest in like Star Wars or my interest in like anime growing up. Like I just talked about what I was supposed to be. Okay. Um, I was I was like, they see me as a football player. I'm a football player. I'm gonna talk about football. Okay. You know? So who are you now? Did you figure that out? Oh yeah, you man. Too deep? <laughs> no, no, we're good. <laughs> what I'll say about me is I'm an extremely unapologetically myself. I can respect um, that. I'm going to do what I want to do. And that's usually stay at home. Train jujitsu. Dang. I know it's hard, right? That's yeah. why I'm just like, I'm keeping my hands in my lap. I, I got the old mafia talk. I know. And I, got, and I got that, whatever this is. I don't. Yeah, the, the vascular. <laughs> like, I I'm just trying to be focused you. and comfortable. And yeah. I, I feel like my arms are down <laughs> here. Like, I just, I feel like my posture is slumpy. Yeah. And I, I, I want to have good posture. Like, I, in general, I like to have good posture. I used to slump a lot. And, um, like I, I'm slumping right now, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, overall, like now, I think that now that I'm so far removed from being back home, <laughs> like I don't really care what people think of me because there's so many people here, no one's paying attention to me anyway. Yeah. Um. So now I feel more free and more like authentic because I wear the stuff I want to wear. I like go where I want to go, do what I want to do give my money to what I want to give my money to, you know? Yeah. Whereas like back there, it was just kind of like, I felt judged, you know? No, that makes sense. Uh, I kind of feel the same way. Um, especially going back, uh, going back to my hometown. Uh, it's hard being back there now. Like, I don't even think I'll ever go back. Uh, 
I don't talk to anybody back there. Uh, it's sad, like, cause we, our group, we were called the Brotherhood. We called it like, we were like, we're brothers forever, forever, forever. Oh shit. Man, it's, it's hard to be brothers when, when people are selfish. You know what I mean? It's hard, it's hard, it's hard. Look, so I, what I will say is like, me, fuck, I, I mentioned them enough. Me, Steve, and Archie, those are my brothers. And then there's Goozy, but me, Steve, and Archie are the ones who train. Okay. Um, we've always held each other accountable, whether it's a tough conversation, whether it's like giving each other flowers, but like we've always been able to separate like, no, he's not telling me this to be mean. He's telling me this because he respects me and he sees where I could be and what I'm doing. Yeah. You know? And like when people can't accept that criticism and can't take that criticism and are willing to give that criticism of their mm -hmm. friends, that's when I seen friend groups like slowly unravel. You know what I mean? Because it's attack at their ego and like a lot of people can't get over that shit. Big facts. And, mm -hmm. I, and I think that's what I saw happen within our group. It was very much a situation where rules for me and not for thee. And uh, across the board, and I would say almost all my male friendships from middle school through high school and you know a little bit of college all those all the relationships carried over for the most part uh, or remnants of them carried over in some fashion yeah and as i as i as i grew and as i matured and, and especially as i started jujitsu like just i became a whole nother person yeah so it's crazy because i moved to california thinking like yeah i'm gonna party and travel and mm. do all this crazy stuff and then I get into jujitsu and I'm, um, I, I travel sometimes, you know, mm. but I'm not partying. My body hurts. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> but like I, I get, like I respect it because jujitsu is giving me something back. Whereas partying, I'm spending triple the money and getting nothing in return. One hundred percent. It's just all just for that moment. Yeah, like like me knowing that I have to go to work and uh not like what i'm doing for eight to ten hours sometimes 11 hours of my day and then go in a go to a place that i know is i'm probably going to be uncomfortable i'm probably going to have to fight every day me digging that deep is me learning something about myself like i'm i'm not david goggins by any means hell no he's a yeah. he's crazy he's what, crazy man, man. yeah but man, inspirational it definitely inspirational but it comes down to the who's going to carry the boats because when you're tired you still gotta you still gotta go and i enjoy digging that deep to like find out who i am and what i have okay you know what i mean when it comes comes down to when it, it. Comes to, i feel like um forgive me if i'm more speaking i'm gonna say this because i feel like this is the same this is a feeling i have and i feel like i've talked about energy i feel like i feel this in you i feel like you're 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 down to get in the trenches. You're down to get dirty. You're down to ride. You're down to be loyal. But you ain't gonna be the only motherfucker doing it. Yeah. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. And that's why that's why like that that's why I like A side, bro. Because yeah. I've I've jumped to a lot of gyms, but some of the people at A side, bro, are just like that they're yeah. down to be in the trenches it doesn't matter because i think we've talked about it those conditioning classes are fucking terrible bro they're terrible but every day it's the same and it's not a small group and that's what i like because iron sharpens iron and game aside um like different like varying skill levels aside mm -hmm. all of those people in there are iron big facts Big facts. I want to see all of them win gold so bad, no. like probably as much as Professor does. It it's hard not to because that's the crazy thing. Like in in jujitsu, because of how close quarters we are, and because of like like you begin to care about people. These become your family. They become your friends. Like a lot of these like. I, I follow some of them on Instagram, some of our mm -hmm. teammates on Instagram, and I seen they met up for Halloween. We didn't even have class on Halloween. Yeah. You yeah. know, and jujitsu gets to be like that close knit community like that. And it's hard not to want to see your teammates succeed. Like, man, like yeah. the, the day 
the day that my not my two my, my two homies at the gym get there and get their first golds, I'm gonna be I'm gonna go home and my girl's gonna like my girl hasn't even met them, but she mm. knows who you are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, there's there's one person in particular who I want to see him shine so bad, um, and it's it's you know it's it's very interesting. Um, wanting something for someone feeling like you have a you know a path but have to be like hey he's his own man let him do his thing and then stepping back in and watching him and just like oh man but if you just did this nope you do you bro so so that's a that's a beautiful (laughs) thing it comes with time bro and like i remember when i first started my my homie tristan Mm mm-hmm Dude, Tristan's like 170 pounds, maybe. I might be adding weight to him. Okay. Tristan used to beat the hell out of me, bro. Tristan used to give me fits. But he's also the reason my game progressed the way it did because he was an all-state wrestler here in California. Okay. And he gave me tips. He gave me tricks. He helped me out. Ah. And like he, he, like he brought me along in a way. Um. <laughs> And yeah, and like now that I'm at a point that I can do that, mm-hmm. and like I remember after one of my first tournaments, Tristan was like, I won, and Tristan was just as hype as me. And I, I always thought like, what's he so hype for? <laughs> you know, he already got his own gold, and he was just like, oh yeah, thank you, that's great. Yeah. And then I won, and he's like, yeah, that's what that's what I'm talking about. I get it now. Yeah. I get it now. No, uh, go ahead. No, no, no. Uh, my homie, uh, shout out DJ Duh. Uh, I don't know. If, uh, he, uh, at my last tournament, I didn't go for it. I wanted to go for a takedown. I just felt like the guy had too much, uh, in my second match, I felt like the guy had like too much energy and that he was like trying to fight. And I just, I'm not, I'm not there yet. So I faked the takedown, but he was like, I saw that takedown attempt. And he's, he was, a, he was the, uh, he was the state champion wrestler in high school. Um, I, I don't know if he wrestled in college. If he didn't, he he's he would he dominated high school though for sure like no, like yeah. like he was that like there are like when I was I remember being a freshman and just hearing the legend of him and this other dude Tyler Frame was the other guy uh, my boy is pretty private so that's why I'm like, but the other guy was Tyler Frame and my boy DJ Duh and like he was just the legends you hear in the halls of the wrestlers like you don't want to fuck with them they wrestlers no. i didn't know what that meant back then but like they they were like you know just <laughs> i just just i'm like oh man and, and like for all intents and purposes i feel like my boy even now has like a mike tyson shape like no, i don't want no smoke he's like like he's, this he's DJ shorter Duh? yeah he's shorter stockier he, he's just just jacked dj duh i want no and, smoke if you looking like tyson bro and he's vegan y'all he's doing this all on a vegan diet i don't know how he does it i mean i could ask him but uh i tried being vegan a couple times it's not my fault. i'm weak <laughs> I'm uh, I, I like my meat yeah i like my cheeseburgers uh, look i'll uh i'll smell i'll smell a steak because they got the grills outside of my house mm. and they grill every night i'll smell a steak and i'll quit that day that Okay, yeah. no. it, it's funny, man. Honestly, I think I'm gonna try and get my homie Tristan to come on. Okay, that'll that'll be. Wow. Where's he located? At? Simi Valley. Oh, he's so he's close. Okay. He's, yeah, he's not far at all. Okay, not far. At all. Let's get him on. What, uh, what rank is it? Not that it matters. We um, have all ranks on here. All ranks are accepted here. Oh yeah. All genders too. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, I not just, cowboy fans though. Uh, not during the season. Oh, not, you can't. You oh. can't say that because I'm a Cowboys oh. fan, bro. I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, y'all didn't have to do us uh, like that. If it makes time. you, if it makes you feel better, I'm the worst kind of sports fans out. Like no, I only follow martial arts now, and I'm like I'm a Notre Dame and USC fan. How does that even work, bro? It doesn't. It doesn't. I know how it, it works, work. and I know how the logistics work in my head, mm-hmm. but uh, it doesn't work. It doesn't work at all. No, it does. But uh, speak, speaking, of, speaking of following martial arts, bro. Okay, we're, we're just gonna jump into this, bro. What do we? Tyson Fury did not win that fight. Oh, Tyson, Tyson Fury didn't win that fight. And like, don't get me wrong, Tyson Fury would beat my ass. I'm not gonna sit here and think that I can handle the smoke with him. No, nah. but <sighs> and Ganu got one. Ganu walked him down, bro. I don't know. I wouldn't say he walked him down 
But, but, but I agree with you. I agree with you. Francis, the Predator, and Ganu won that fight. Daniel Cormier said it best. A patient Francis is a scary Francis. He was patient. And it didn't matter. Tyson, uh, I need a drink of water. I'm sorry. No, we're good. We're good. Tyson, Tyson Fury is so skilled, though. So, like, like he's made the heavy, like, I think uh, during the fight, they said he hasn't lost in 16 years, right? Yeah. Um, that's crazy. That's, yeah, no, that, it's bananas. That's crazy. The fact that Nganu is technically not a boxer. He's not a boxer. And at no point did we see this masterful, like, I'm up here and you're down here, like Tyson told us he was mm -hmm. going to do. It actually looked like he did not like the situation he was put in. Like, around the seventh round, I felt like he was like, I'm, I'm not getting paid enough for this. Yeah. And the second... They, they, he's only credited for one knockdown. I seen two personally, but I'm gonna be controversy. I say it was one knockdown with one kind of losses. I, I was a, so the reason why I can't call it a knockdown because it wasn't a knockdown because of a punch. It was a knockdown because of forearm to the head, and that's not technically a legal boxing shot, which okay. is why I can't call it a knockdown. Okay, so uh, okay, we'll we'll put that aside. But e either way, with, without so I. I, I could be wrong, you know. Okay. I see. I just watched. No, the yeah, we we run it back, and I'm not. I'm not arguing. I'm just saying, like, that's why I can't call it to. Yeah. But I see your argument 100. percent He went down twice. He hit the canvas twice. Yeah, but forearm aside, like, if you even take away the knockdowns, and Ganu should not have done that well. If he's, if it's an exhibition, and I'm just throwing him a bone, like mm -hmm. Tyson Fury made it seem. Yeah. And then the next day pictures, bro. The, fit, the damage, the face. Yeah, yeah. I, I stand by that. Um, I was going to say Tyson Fury, I think, and if you look at some of his previous fights, I think Tyson Fury is kind of a dirty boxer. I think he's used to getting people in the clinch and tie, leaning on them, tiring them out, and then just stepping back and being able to do that little, I don't know if that, I, I feel like he looks like a meth addict, a little Whatever twitch he does, <laughs> you know. Well, you know, he, that's why I mean, he quit. So, but I feel like he's just yeah. a dirty. He's a gypsy boxer. They're, those are dirty, like not to like not to disparage a, a group of people, but they're people who are survivors. They're scrappy and they will do anything to win and survive. And that and that means fight dirty. That's what I mean by that. And he comes from that culture, and he's used to leaning on people and doing those dirty tricks. And Ghana was having none of it. So I. The thing is, bro, I don't know if you've ever stood. I've stood next to Ngano, bro. I have not. I'm six. But that's a big ass dude. I'm six five. I should not feel like a child next to somebody in any situation ever. Maybe NBA players, because they're like in the sevens, you know. But like, I'm a, I'm a big guy and he made me feel like a child in height and like just like stockiness i can tell like he could have like put his hand on my shoulder and was, like just move me around at will that's funny like so whenever he did try and lean on him that that uh, uppercut he took at the beginning of the fight mm -hmm. he was like oh no no i don't want that yeah of course you don't yeah, want that yeah that's what i'm saying he kept he tried to lean on him and then francis got him with a little clinch tie and he was just like nah it's coming this nah bro nah he didn't want any of that smoke yeah, and then and then the the knock on him for so long in the UFC, like oh he has bad cardio. Mm -hmm. Nine rounds in, he looks so fresh. Man, he looked good. They said they said a patient in Ganu is a uh, is a scary in Ganu. Yes. A conditioned in Ganu is death. Man, it's if he if he went into boxing right now, what do you think that? I feel like it's very possible he disrupted boxing. I could be wrong, could be hundreds wrong, but he definitely ruffled something in the boxing world so now i answer the question it's like this bro to me um because he did that now he can call out anthony joshua and he can mm -hmm. call De Deon, uh, deontay wilder is wilder even fighting anymore um wilder wilder uh he is fighting yeah he's not i don't know who's fighting actually there's talks i believe there's talks of him and ngannou fighting next but i don't know or at some point <sighs> that would be freaking crazy I think I think Wilder will get touched up though because he's not as masterful defensively. Um, he's not as patient. 
Oh yeah. He'll, I think I think what Wilder do is Wilder will try to stick to the game plan, but when he gets hit with a force that he's never felt before, he's his game plan is gonna break down. You know what Mike Tyson says. You have a game plan to get hit in the fucking face. <laughs> See, I didn't have to say it. you knew what I was talking about. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh that's that's crazy. Because in reality, now I want to see Nganu fight Anthony Ruiz and Anthony Joshua and work his way up. And not as an exhibition. I want to see him do it. But he's with the PFL. Uh, according to what I... I listen to a lot of this stuff. I think from my understanding, PFL's like, do what you want in boxing. Ooh. Do what you want in boxing. Also, they just bought Bellator. Word on the street is like a couple of days ago. You see, uh, so, oh, so uh, did you see that Michael, they released Michael Venom Page before no. Bellator was bought out? So no. I think Michael Venom Page, and he's been dropping hints that he's signing with the UFC. Mm. Bro, Michael Venom Page versus Izzy, Izzy, both styles, I think, would allow the other to open up and force him to be a little more creative in their okay. game. Hell of a fight. I I don't know much about Michael Venom Page. I'm gonna have to go check him out. That'll be my next deep dive. When lose it. So you you're gonna love or hate Michael Venom Page. He's okay. very like McGregor. He talks a lot of shit, uh, okay. but he's had a lot of success knocking people out, and he plays a very Silva like hands down okay. defense, and he's very fucking good. Like, at it. like An Anderson Silva. Yeah, okay. very okay. yeah, okay. hands down dodging, weaving. Uh, yeah, okay. he's uh, he's got some skill, bro. And Izzy's a good, good dodger, fainter. Mm. Mm. They're they're both like crazy good counter strikers. And uh, the only thing I would say that I think that Michael Venom Page has over Izzy to me would seem like maybe power. Okay, but you never really know until you take the punch. And I've never I've not taken either of those punches. Never. Am I? Well, I mean, I might. Like if I had the opportunity to train with him, I totally would. As a martial artist, I would have to. Is he? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think, so whenever he's doing his jiu-jitsu training, you know he's down at Autos yeah, in San, San Diego. Diego. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which is dope. Um, I want to get down there and train. Um, I haven't been down to San Diego to train. Uh, shout out uh, Primal Fitness and Jiu-Jitsu. Um, uh, that's in San Diego. I, honestly, I think I stopped by there once. I think I saw by there. Yeah, uh, D. Davis. He's he's a he's a dope black belt up there. Pretty solid. Uh, he's he's giving me a home uh, to lay my head at when I'm down in San Diego. Oh yeah, you should, honestly you should check it out because there's a lot of schools in San Diego that are lit. Um, a little further south, there's Gracie Hamaita. I want to get there because that's where I got promoted from. So uh, Hoyler Hoyler trains out of there, I believe, and that's why I want to go back there. Oh, so you already have connections. Uh, I guess I could. I have some connections because I'm still connected to um his nephews. Okay. So, I um, I'll tell everyone this: if you get the chance, train at Legion, bro. Okay. Train at Legion, um, just because one they're open every day. What's up? Ah, uh, no, I was gonna say that's uh we were talking about Gordon Ryan and Nikki Rod. I was like, oh, that's where I saw Nikki Rod. At Legion, yeah, at Legion, because that's Bro. where I did, I did. I did a, um, I did a little thing that they did there. Yeah, so Legion has a lot of good guys. It's like a consistent, like just because of the name of who opened the gym. There's a consistent, like high level practitioner that's gonna be there. Um, and then on top of that, it's fucking huge to be like I haven't yeah, it's been a there. Big warehouse, it's nice. Yeah, I haven't been there since they had. Like I went at the beginning. Mm -hmm. um it's huge man and i've just seen how much it's grown it's crazy and it's nice because they have that uh that, that back door that opens up so it's like you get that outside inside which i think is cool like i think uh one day i want to own a gym and i if i don't have it like outside completely i definitely want to incorporate that vibe because i think it's like a really cool especially in this area california or you know somewhere tropical okay no i feel you like it, like because where the street that they're on it's like 20 minutes from the beach if you go straight to la jolla so okay. like it's it's a prime location it's a very prime location so i think they have a still in all honesty and i think that as a whole eventually legion is going to overtake autos as like the 
most popular jujitsu spot in San Diego just really? because. Yeah, I never trained at Achos in um, San Diego like that just because it's really hard to get in. It's and very, it's very Brazilian. It does. It's not very welcoming. Like it's not well. Like I try to train there. Having having trained in having trained in Brazil, it, it is kind of a different vibe, and you kind of have to like have a different energy about it. Um, I feel like to train, you know, with like real Brazilians. Yeah, well, like, um, I don't know how it is now. Like, again, this was like five years ago. Mm -hmm. Like, this was whenever Galvao was still at his peak. And that's what I'm saying. He's running everything, right? Yeah. And like, so because he was so popular and anyone who did jujitsu was trying to go because of Galvao, um, it was just hard to get in. Yeah. Matt, like, Matt fees were high as shit. Like, yeah. Like 80 bucks. Damn. And Legion's not like that. Legion's very free. Legion's very open. There's no like real gi restriction. Every like I think Sloan Climber trains there in like specialized gi shorts. Mm -hmm. Have yeah. you seen that? What I mean, that's what I mean. Like it's kind of a different energy. It's a little bit more old school, a little bit more traditional, a little bit more, I would say, I don't want to say stuffy, um, but it rigid's the right word. Rigid. Yeah. Rigid is a little bit more rigid. Like, no, this is what we're doing. There isn't really any room, I feel like, for uh creativity, at least not at lower levels. They want you to know your they want you to know it through and through. And it's very, nope, you do this, don't do anything else, do this. You you know what I'm happy to see is kind of like phased out of jujitsu. When I first started, mm -hmm. a lot of schools I went to wouldn't let you catch live rolls until you had like three stripes really yeah hmm. yeah i'm so glad that that's phased out that like you don't you don't like really retain information without application i agree i agree um i i've been to a school that has that uh i kind of liked it though I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if it was at what level of strife. I don't know if it was like certain strife, but they definitely had like an intro like level class. And it was like in this intro class, you don't roll. You just focus on the technique and the basis. Um, and maybe they encourage you to go to open mat and get your rolls in that way. I'm not sure, but. Uh, oh, yeah. The one the ones I'm talking about. Not if you even come to open mat, they'll tell you to like drill. Oh uh, yeah, side. no, I definitely saw white belts at the open mat train yeah, at the open mats, and they were always kind of, and they they encouraged them to explore and try and stuff like that. So yeah, it because to me, for me, it's like that's the scary part of it. So treat them like a kid and just push them in. Yeah, hey, actually, not to like not to like steer off, but uh, we kind of talked about this earlier. Uh, when do you think uh, Gordon Ryan and uh, Nikki Rod are gonna fight, if ever? Oh, you mean the number one and number two hero of Jiu Jitsu? Yeah, yeah. That's how, like, I look at that as our all might and our endeavor. Bro, so I I can't give it that, compar that comparison because I feel the way I feel about it. Um, personally, I don't understand why it hasn't even been a conversation. At this point, Gordon Ryan's recycling, like, his victims. Yeah, I'm 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 wondering why we, why this I this last who's number one who did he go against uh, he's number twelve I don't uh, I, I I feel I feel bad I should know more um, but whoever he went against uh, he ran right through him and that's not I mean I guess this would be expected of Gordon but what I want to see is I want to see Gordon up against a challenge. I want to see our number one hero versus our number. I want to see All Might versus Endeavor. Bro. I want to see Goku versus Vegeta. I'm I'm about to dig into my Chow son and bag, my Chow son and bag, and just be a instigator. Yeah, go go go. Like, look, bro. To me, the only rumbles I've ever heard of Gordon Ryan struggling with it because he's that good, bro. He's that good. The only times I've ever heard him struggling, we've never seen. One hundred percent. Nikki Rod in practice. Nikki Rod in practice. And then Nikki Rod broke away. And correct me if I'm wrong. That's when Gordon Ryan kind of got on the juice, bro. Okay. So to me, there's like a correlation that he got frustrated with the size, the athleticism, and just kind of raw talent of Nikki Rod. Okay. Started causing issues, started causing friction. Then they shoot him away. They because mm. they're not gonna have Gordon Ryan leave the gym. 
Mickey Rod has no, 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 Gordon. There's no way Donahue and Gordon do the face, the the brand, no matter what. Yeah, and it's and I think it's very interesting. I'm gonna let you continue. I think it's very interesting that his brother's at B team, which is kind of confusing. I feel like does he not fuck with his brother like that? Like what's up? No, nah, so with jujitsu, I think you have to allow people to like form their own game and take their own route. Uh, you know? Agreed. No, no, big facts. And like. But yeah, I think I think like just me personally, I just want to see Gordon Ryan go against someone new and someone to rumor to have be like like made him struggle. And like we don't even really know how bad it was. You know, or yeah. we don't even know if we're if I'm right. But I just want to fucking see it just because that's the rumor. That's the rumor that Nicky Rod gave him fits. So it is a hundred percent fact that uh Nikki broke his leg in their who's number one match, right? In Gordon's uh, room? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's 100% fact that that happened, or he like hairline fracture, whatever the case is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gordon Ryan stopped competing right after that. I think, um, look, I am not judging any of these people. These people operate how they operate. I am more speaking on the aspect of I want to see the best fight the best. Yeah. I want to see Gordon fight Nikki, and I don't think there's anyone better out than those two um, when it comes to no gi. Who's beating Nikki Rod? So the who's thing, beating him? He, uh, who's that dude with the mullet, bro? Mm-hmm. He, the, there's a there's a wrestler. Who oh, there's has there's, his there's this uh, guy from London, like this European guy. Is that Super I, jet. He he's. I think they've gone like twice, and Nikki Rod's lost twice. Okay. Oh, you know what? They they just went against each other on. I think it was a, a Polaris match or something. Man, I know. I need to. I need to memorize these things and we'll talk about them (laughs) anyways my point saying is i really feel like i want to see gordon ryan versus nikki rod i don't want to see anyone else i don't want to see gordon ryan go against anyone else well didn't they just announce he's fighting pena again no um on his team, someone else. I'm gonna pull this up since we're talking. You go ahead and talk while I pull this up. Yeah, why I got the iPad here. Like, please. but going off of what you said, I love to watch the best fight the best. Like in basketball, like back in the day, whenever it was like Allen Iverson and a, like Allen Iverson and Kobe. Yes, that's, that's what pulled numbers. Um, Jiu Jitsu has been on a trajectory moving upwards. You know what I mean. I think the match that's going to kind of push jujitsu over the edge is 100% Nicky Rod and Gordon Ryan. And like, I've seen both of them in person from that ADCC in 2022. They're fucking huge. They're like gladiators, bro. Yeah. It's like putting like, like, like Spartacus and Theocles for like, if you like go off yeah, of gladiators. What man, do, bro. Yeah, man, did you watch that show back in the day? Oh, I definitely watched that show. Bro, that's exactly what this is. That man has a great analogy. Yeah, and Gordon Ryan's definitely Theocles. Gordon Ryan's definitely Theocles, but I think Nicky Rod has it. Like, he he is. Uh, he's exciting to watch, bro. He's exciting to watch. He bring like he's too big to be cartwheeling over people, and that initial shock factor is an issue. It's an issue. It's, it gives you pause because. How do you how do you compete against someone that can plow through you and then someone who can finesse around you? No, it's, and it makes it it makes it really hard. Um, I think the biggest example of that is when uh, they were talking about I think you did like some back spring out of a back back yeah. mount, and they're like, "How do I defend against that?" Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. Based on my game on how I roll, I'd rather roll with Nikki Rod than Gordon Ryan. Mm-hmm. Um, because I know Gordon Ryan, as great as he is, he's just going to try and sniff my feet for five minutes. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but yeah. Man, this is not... Maybe if I go to their actual Instagram, it's just not coming up on a normal search. <laughs> it's hard for you. Like, I feel like for me, it's really hard to find uh, jujitsu based uh, like when things are coming out and what's going on. And I, I follow who's number one directly. Like who's number oh, one Hulk. in fight tour? Uh, Lucius, I can't see. Um, oh, Barbosa. No, yeah, Lucas Hulk. That's who he's fighting. That's who Gordon Ryan's fighting next. Oh, okay. And Pena is fighting some. Oh, here it is. Uh, Pena, oh, man. Then let me zoom in. Uh, Pedro Mino is fighting Rafael Lovato Jr. Mika Gavone is fighting Cody Steele. Uh, go ahead. Mika's a beast, bro. Man, 
But like again, it's it's the is is it the juice? Because we I mean we're talking we're talking with uh, Ross the uh, last podcast talking about there's no way to make an ADC without juicing. And I'm of the mindset of kind of like him, like I want to do everything natural. Don't get me wrong, I am open to peptides, uh, to you know pe- testosterone, TRT, testosterone yeah, yeah. replacement as far as recovery because um, all my injuries. But I'm of the mindset I want to be as natural as possible. Um, so I'm with you. I'm trying to I'm trying to be more natural than anything. Um, so is is it the juice? I don't really I don't really know. Um, but it's still fun to watch man it's still fun to watch and if they're not going to regulate it in jujitsu i'm not going to worry myself with it okay um so i know i know it's not my place to do this but before we go i have to i have to talk Yes, I, you could do it. I'm gonna, You're the co-host, bro. What you mean? You like you got just as much power I'm, as I have. I'm, I'm, about about, to, I'm about to put you in on my bullshit. That's why. All right. I'm we're about to do this. Back on our bullshit. Yeah. I'm about to make a run in some tournaments just because I've been bored. Um, okay. and I've been telling myself I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna record, I'm gonna document, I'm gonna right. let y'all know what's going on on the podcast. I'm gonna do about four to six beginning of twenty twenty four. Bet, bet. Hold me to that. Um, and I'll make him come with me. Yeah. Oh, I'm 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 gonna film the hell out of it. I'm gonna film. I'm gonna film the hell out of it. Yeah. And then and then on top of that, I'm bringing home golds. And me personally, I'm gonna make a run back at high rollers. Yeah, yeah. Ah, I found the clap button. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, hey, that that kind of got that kind of okay. lit yeah. a fire in me again. I'm gonna have to join you. I'm gonna have to join you. Um. Yes, so 2024 is going to be interesting. Um, why Why do you think uh, you want to make this run? So we uh, we've kind of been touching on it since since the first one. Yeah. Um, I've I've always wanted to like whether I make money or not. Um, I've always wanted to just do jujitsu. Like this is what makes me happy. This is kind of what Same. I relate everything in life to. This is my passion, um, and I've never pretty much grabbed my balls and done a full set of tournaments. And I don't feel it's right for me to sit here and criticize people better than me if I'm not going to put myself out there too. I can respect that. Yes, sir. So Test your um, belt. I'm talking shit about that's, Gordon Ryan. That's got to be the that. slogan. Test your belt. <laughs> yeah. So I'm, I'm out there and I'm about to be in the gym. Um, if y'all watching this, send me gym recommendations. I'll pull up. Don't. Only if y'all have big dudes, so I'm not trying to go. Yeah, yeah. We need we need guys our size. We need yeah. we need the best of the best of the best of the best, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> um Yeah, I think uh as far as competition goes, like I said, I'm chilling. Uh, I I went on a little run this year. I didn't even plan to go on a run. A little run you did most of the year, bro. Yeah, yeah I did. Since you've been back. I've done I've done what, four or five tournaments this year? Yeah. Uh so one each quarter for the most part. Uh it's been uh, I need I need a break. No, I feel you. Uh, when I mean like put you in on my bullshit, I'm you, you're holding me accountable. Oh yeah 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 no no for yeah, sure yeah, for yeah. sure. And I'm I'm gonna tap in. Um, well, there was something else. Oh yes. So um, do you have to go? Let me ask you that. Uh, I, I, got, I got a little bit more time. You gotta go. We can end it here. I got a little bit more time. I got like ten minutes. I and then I got to like not. I got All like ten right, minutes. Cool. You know what? Let's wrap it up. Let's get it. All right. Well, everyone, thank you. Thank you so much for tapping in. Uh, This is going to be a wrap on the third episode. Um, We lost the camera. I'm hoping we didn't lose a camera over here. I can't really. We might just be on this one camera this whole time and stuck with the iPhone footage. And uh, that's what I get for not using uh, whatever. Uh, anyways, thank you guys for tapping in. Uh, I promise we're going to make this better. We're going to work on our uh, our sets, our audio, uh, everything, our presentation. It's just it's just us. No. And go for ahead. now. For now. Yeah, yeah. To the moon. Are we are we dodge coining this? Doge coin, what it was called? To the moon back. Uh I'm t- yeah. <laughs> that 2020. I'm old man. I'm old. I forgot. I forgot life. Uh yeah, so we out of here. Um 
update like i said we're on all platforms spotify youtube apple uh amazon i think google might be the only one we're not on but by the time this airs we'll probably be on that too because i'm focused on that so whatever platform you're looking into check it out and uh if you like this content please please share like subscribe it's going to help us a long way to grow this channel and this podcast and help us uh you know go plus ultra and you know, talk a little shit about Gordon Ryan some more. Ah, I'm gonna I'm gonna poke the bear. You gonna poke the bear? I'm gonna poke the bear. We doing this for views, I guess. Now, I guess. Look, <laughs> <laughs> we did it for the views. <laughs> no, nah, honestly, I'm just trying to pull up to the gym and get beat up. You, know, like, you uh, can't be the best until you roll with the best. I mean, uh, you know that that's 100. percent I feel like this is like really. I'm gonna pull this up a little bit. I feel like 100 percent Gordon. I want to roll with the best. I want to roll with Hickson. I don't. Mm-hmm. I don't care that he's old. I don't care that like. And I'm not trying to beat him. It's not to beat with them, beat anybody. I don't even think I can beat them. I don't even try to beat black belts right now. Honestly, I just. I just try to like. Don't give yourself that headache, bro. Get a position or like, okay, I got a sweep or I got out of a bad position. That's those are the games I went. Oh, he didn't choke me this time because I put my hand here for this block and he had to move somewhere. You know what I mean? It's never, it's never like I'm trying to beat him. So my point is that I want to roll with the best. Gordon Ryan's the best. I want to learn from the best. John Donahue's the best. So I want to, I want to go to some seminars. I want to learn some things from these people. Um, Hicks and Gracie, um, Hodger Gracie, Marcelo Garcia, the list of the names go on. Bushesha, like name them all. Um, also, I want to, I want to, I want to do a thing where we uh, watch the Bushesha versus Hodger Gracie fight and we analyze it. Oh, yeah, I'm with that. Bet, I'm bet. with that. We'll I'm with that. All right, we're rambling, wrapped up. All right, y'all, y'all stay blessed, stay loved, um, and. Uh, if you don't realize it yet, hopefully you will soon. Anything you want is possible. You just got to go out there and try. All right, y'all. Peace.